thanks, Johnny, for the introduction and for the invitation to come along today. Um, I should probably start with a, a conf confessional. Uh, I'm not a computer scientist, uh, and my slides are in PowerPoint. Um, so I am a Microsoft user, Windows user. Um, but what I want to talk today, yeah, big sighs and uh, <laughs> boos and hisses. Um, what I want to talk a little bit about today is software-defined networking. Um, and how we're using open source in that, and how basically um, open source underpins uh, the open movement, which is, has brought around about uh, software-defined networking. Um, so I'm going to talk just a little bit about uh, the movement, as I mentioned. Does, uh, how many people have heard of software-defined networking? Uh, quite a reasonable handful. Um, okay, so we'll just briefly introduce that to give you the, uh, the background of what we're talking about here in OpenFlow. Um, and then talk about uh, Project Delta, which is an open source project that I, I work on. Um, and then I've got a uh, couple of recommendations for you. Um, so in terms of uh, net the network community, over the last about eight to ten years, there's been a huge movement towards uh, openness. And I do put uh, openness in inverted commas there, um, because for all of the reasons that Phil mentioned, um, there are limitations on what actually is open, what actually becomes free, and what actually <coughs> is reusable. Uh, but for the most part, um, there's a strong uh, drive towards trying to create uh, an end-to-end -end service, network service provision uh, with open components, open devices, and, and open orchestration. So these are just a list of uh, a number of the different um, open uh, membership-based organizations that have, have spun up in the last uh, eight to ten years. I won't go into all of them, but they're representing uh, software-defined networking and networks functions virtualization, and then the orchestration and management and control around those. So SDN itself, um, when we're talking about traditional networking, which we, we now uh, term a traditional networking, uh, the communication across the net where you've talked about having devices like your switches, your routers, your access points, all of those throughout the network that are responsible for passing your requests, say for example to the net Netflix to download your video, uh, sending that from your mobile um, out to the network and back. Those are passed through these devices that were co-located the control and the forwarding. So what that means is that we had, you had maybe a single box um, and generally owned by uh, a single company uh, like Cisco or Juniper would be the main uh, suppliers of network equipment. Um, and then the control functionality is so how to pass that uh, request or packet coming in uh, of the network out to the next box in the network. All that was done within one, uh, with one box. Uh, so the forwarding functionality uh, and the control component. And the idea there, the issue there, at least the limitation has been uh, that if you want to change something about how the network uh, is configured or <laughs> controlled or how the traffic is forwarded across it, you then have to dial into each of those boxes individually to change that control function. Um, and that has led to an awful lot of uh, issues in terms of misconfiguration. Uh, and it's obviously a laborious, uh, uh, long process. So for longer than the eight to 10 years that I've talked about a minute ago, uh, there's been a movement to try and break away from this and separate uh, the control and forwarding in the network to provide a little bit more programmability uh, and control of the network. So for around 20 to 30 years, there's been different um, approaches and different recommendations for how to do this. But the term SDN was coined about 10 years ago. Um, and the idea here is that you've got in the diagram the separation. So the idea would be that you have a logically centralized control function. And we say logically because it's not necessarily going to be centrally located. It could be a distributed uh, control platform, but uh, functioning logically. Uh, and then separated from that, from the fo those packet forwarding functionality. And the packet forwarding functionality can remain in, fi in physical or virtual switches and routers. Uh, and to support that, we obviously need uh, an open application programming interface. Uh, and how SDN has actually come about is through the development of the OpenFlow protocol, which provides that open API. And that was developed by Stanford, um, uni at Stanford University. So open, since when OpenFlow came out um, and was made available or published, it then drove this whole community uh, around open networking and enabling the separation of control, enabling programmability of the network. So rather than changing something in each of those devices, you can issue commands from this control point and set, send them out to whatever devices uh, require to be updated or changed or reconfigured. So when we look at um, what's in a switch, bringing back to how the OpenFlow has changed the, the model of networking, um, on the, we got a, oh, we don't have a pointer here. Um, on the left-hand side of the chart there, Within a switch itself, in that traditionally style uh, single vendor product, you have silicon, you've got a box, 
you've got the hardware driver, network operating system, and then applications, so network applications, things like load balancing, functionality, those sort of elements. Um, and the Cisco and Juniper style um, uh, business model, I suppose, is, is all of that in a single vendor, uh, providing all of that functionality together. Uh, so if you and uh, the networking people among you will, uh, will appreciate, if you go and buy uh, Juniper equipment, then you're generally going to be stuck with Juniper for the rest of the equipment uh, in your network uh, because they'll have a specific protocol that they're using and it becomes quite difficult to get people to uh, either equipment to interact or for people to, to learn multiple protocols and become proficient with all of those. Um, so with the OpenFlow model, the idea would be then, okay, well, we can now have separate vendors uh, for hardware or software uh, at, the, at the switch level, and then separate uh, vendors offering the, the controller. And we can do that with this open, open flow program, or open flow protocol at least. If they both speak the lang both same language, they can both communicate. Now obviously that still um, ends up in some kind of, uh, it's obviously still a bit of a business uh, model. Um, so it has led towards a lot of development um, with open uh, products at each of these two, two levels. But the ideal would be that we'll then have third-party applications that could plug into any controller, that could plug into any uh, bare metal switch. And we're not quite there yet today. So I actually read a, um, a, a sad statistic the other day uh, in a blog that talk in data centers, which is where SDN has been deployed mostly to date, um, because of the, the level of research that we're at in terms of um, being able to verify the functionality and, and to offer the same functions and, and uh, reliability that you have in a traditional style network. Um, mostly SDN has been deployed in data centers. And in fact, rather than all of these open source uh, tools and, and products that I'll, I'll come to in a moment, uh, they have said that 72% consider that Cisco are offering their data center SDN and 39% that Juniper are offering their uh, SD data center SDN. So we're clearly not doing it right yet. Uh, but this on the, on the right hand side of the slide there is the future where we'd actually like, like to go with this. So some of the um, bodies that I mentioned, I showed Open Networking Foundation on the first slide there. Um, I'm involved with the Open Networking Foundation in the security uh, working group. So my research is around the security of SDN specifically. Uh, and op the Open Network Foundation was founded about five years ago to promote SDN. Uh, they became the caretaker of the OpenFlow protocol, uh, and it's a membership-based organization. They also have things like they have a switch specification um, to provide open standards. So the idea is that all of the members will come together and offer these open, uh, develop open standards so that we will get to the point where we can have this plug-and-play capability across the network with all the different uh, stack levels and components. And the ONF have been learning an awful lot from uh, the software community uh, and from the background to open source um, around, around computing and bringing that into networking. So the drive over the last couple of years has been really to move towards software-driven standards. So we've set up, uh, from the ONF, they set up open source SDN. Um, and the idea there is then that rather than this traditional style of uh, standards development, which would work within uh, organizations like the IETF, uh, where a group of companies come together, the loudest voice in the room tends to direct what actually goes into the standard, um, and it takes a long process to actually come up with a standard, which is then brought into, uh, people can then develop their products around. So with this, what we're trying to do is have open source prototypes, software prototypes coming up and being done in parallel. So you've got working groups in the ONF that are coming up with some models uh, or some um, description specifications. People are working on open source project projects to actually develop those, and there's a kind of a two-way process then to try and iterate and produce the best uh, standard or specification based on what actually works fundamentally. So, as I said, there are a number of uh, open source uh, software pieces and hardware pieces to date. Some of them uh, that we're looking at, that I'm involved with, are so the Open Network Operating System uh, and Open Daylight would be two uh, SDN controllers there. Uh, Ryu is another one, the illustration of Project Floodlight. Uh, at the bottom level, there hasn't been, there's, so there's an Open V switch, which is a virtual uh, switch, so you can actually plug some of these together to create your own network. Um, on the bare metal side, there's an open network install environment. Uh, there's open network Linux platform that's being worked on with a series of companies that are working on the open compute uh, project 
to develop um, the platform that you can actually, the firmware that you can then build into and run any um, switch, switch uh, software or any hard software within the hardware, within some open hardware. So there's combinations being worked on there, but as we, as we heard earlier on from Phil's talk to say, there's a lot of challenges we're still encountering. But for us, uh, looking at in the education and research space, the benefits that we see, both from the networking perspective, there's been a massive acceleration in innovation with the availability of, uh, of tools and equipment to test these and to do the research on. Uh, we can also have, uh, show the open source software. We can get students working on, on open source software, and several of uh, our final year project students would be a, a, able to ex access these projects, both learning from the developer communities uh, and getting exposure. And as, again, <laughs> Phil mentioned earlier on, the use of GitHub and getting involved with other people uh, worldwide who may have more experience, they may be uh, long-term software developers, can really help uh, educate uh, students and help them get up to the right uh, level of uh, expertise expected when you're going into industry, for example. Uh, and then from the research perspective, now SDN is a specific example, I suppose, because we're talking about uh, an open platform that we're researching and then open source coming out of the platform or driving the platform. But we get great access. We can actually do a lot of research. Um, and I don't really want to use the word free, because Johnny will probably hit me over the head. Uh, but we have access to uh, tools and networking equipment that we wouldn't otherwise be able to explore um, uh, w without having open source styles. So we can prototype solutions for that. And one of the examples is this project that we set up. So I mentioned from the Open Networking Foundation Security Working Group. So we spun out this project uh, called Delta uh, in the open source SDN uh, project space, which is actually a penetration testing framework uh, for SDN. So we actually we, uh, demoed this at a showcase in The Hague in, in October, um, and we got a prize for that, so that was pretty good. Uh, so people can see the benefit uh, of doing this kind of project. So the idea is, the illustration that I showed you was quite basic at the beginning of SDN, uh, of the SDN network or layered approach. But what we have in that, one of the quite straightforward examples to, uh, to understand is when we're introducing that openness, so if we're separating out the control and the data functionality, we're then transmitting control messages in an open, uh, an open communication platform. So the issue would be interception. If that communication path isn't secured, uh, it's possible to eavesdrop on those, confusion, uh, on those uh, communications and potentially uh, run a man-in-the-middle attack, etc. So we've looked at this from a research perspective. What are the vulnerabilities in the platform? Um, and we want to encourage developers of network equipment, SDN equipment, and, and tools and communication protocols to consider the security aspects. So the tool that we've produced is actually to provide a penetration testing uh, of a platform. Uh, and how we've done that, we're looking at both security issues within the OpenFlow protocol itself uh, and also then in SDN components. So we're looking at, and this is just an illustration of uh, at the different layers what some of the uh, challenges and vulnerabilities might be. So as you can see on the control channel there, you've got the eavesdropping or the man in the middle. And there are a, a, a load of other different ones, particularly bringing in third-party applications, which is where there's been a limited uh, development to date because of some of the issues. Most of what's been done with SDN is actually, you'll have a controller with bundled applications which are then uh, provided by the same uh, provider or vendor. Um, so the, this uh, code is available on GitHub. What we have there is a, a platform, it's a vagrant uh, image that we can download and spin up with uh, your native machine will be the agent manager. Uh, and then a series of VMs will provide the control and the channel agent and the host uh, functionality. So with, although this is an open source project, obviously itself, what we're using in it or what we're testing against is open source tools and, as well. So for example, the switch we look at is, in, is open vSwitch, uh, which is available uh, on the Linux platform. Uh, and then controllers like ONOS, for example, and Floodlight and Ryu that I mentioned in the, in the previous slides. So this is available on GitHub um, to download if anybody's interested in having a look at some of that. Um, and then just to finish up, um, to highlight a couple of do-it-yourselves or try it for yourselves. So Mininet is a network emulation platform. Um, it's a network and a laptop, as they say. So if you download Mininet, you can add your own controller uh, of your choice to that. It comes, as I said before, with OpenVSwitch or a default uh, switch if you want. 
Um, and you can test out, build your own applications, down, try, try out some applications on that. Uh, this other one at the bottom I, I, th I think is quite fun. It was uh, launched last year, Fawcett. Uh, it's also an open source SDN project and it's a controller. Uh, and what the guys have done here is actually illustrate uh, how you can set it up on your Raspberry Pi, uh, connect it up to this Zodiac switch. The Zodiac switch is the cheapest SDN switch in the world. It costs, it was uh, developed by Northbound Networks in Australia. Um, it's $99, so about 60 pounds. Uh, so you can quickly set up your own, your own network using quite a few um, cheap tools, put a bit of open source uh, software on them um, and get up and running. And just to show that it can work, the Open Networking Foundation, they actually run their, their network using Fawcett. Um, they, have, they have a different, a different switch, maybe a, a larger cap capacity switch. Um, but you can, they showed this uh, running uh, at several conferences recently. So, you know, multiple hundreds of users uh, running or working with a network. So it's uh, build it, use it, and, th and then you can uh, run your own networks on it. For, so potentially for SMEs, it's, a, it's an option for, for getting out there. So I would encourage you to, if you're interested at all, um, try out some of these things. If you're, those companies here, if you're interested in collaborating a little bit on SDN research, please come and, uh, and talk to us. Uh, and any students here who'd like to get involved, we've got loads of projects, uh, pretty exciting stuff, and you can get involved uh, and globally and with a great community globally. So that's it. Thank you very much.